I'm on Highway 635 this morning in Dallas, Texas. Let me make sure I merge here. Safety first, boys and girls. All right, we're good. The reason this highway matters in particular today is that I'm gonna be using it as an important visual reference point as I do a short cross country without the use of the GPS. I'm gonna be using pilotage and dead reckoning to get where I need to go. And importantly today, that means I gotta be extra cautious to not bust the Class B airspace that's really prevalent around where I'm flying today in Dallas. So pilotage and dead reckoning are basically ways to navigate using simple things like visual reference points and predetermined headings to get you where you need to go, not using the GPS. Now normally it's not, it's not a very big deal, but today when we're flying, and avoiding the Class Bravo airspace in and around DFW, which is some of the busiest airspace in the entire world, the stakes get a little bit higher. So we're gonna be turning off the GPS today. You'll have access to uh, the iPad so you can see exactly where we're at. And I'm gonna be using this old thing, sectional if you've ever used it before, and see where I'm at. Let's see if I do it correctly. Clear prop. So I'll have about seven checkpoints that I'm trying to use in my pilotage and dead reckoning technique to get me down to Waco. Uh, so while we're taxiing down for takeoff, let's briefly cover that flight plan so you can know how to judge me. So departing off of Addison, I need to quickly identify Highway 635, which if I can follow will keep me out of Class B. I can follow that down until I'm a beam Mesquite Metro Airport, at which point I'll fly a heading of about 190 to find Highway 45, which I'll follow to Bardwell Lake near the town of Ennis. At that point, I can climb up to cruising altitude and find Navarro Mills Reservoir. Then I'll turn right to a heading of about 260 to find I-35, which I know leads me down to Waco. In order to know when I'm south of the class Delta airspaces of TSTC and of Waco Regional, I'll look for the stadium at Baylor University, conveniently labeled on the sectional, and start my descent into my destination airport of McGregor. It's simple on paper, but follow along to see if I can pass my own test. 916 Delta Fox start runway 33 clear for takeoff when calm. 33 clear for takeoff 916 Delta Fox start. Find 635. To be completely honest, I was counting on a southbound departure because they almost always fly southbound out of Addison. But this morning we were taking off to the north, so always be ready for curveballs, you know. Well, I've got the tollway underneath me, which I know goes runs into 635. So let's go find it. At Addison on my right, I'm kind of over the tollway, and so I see it intersecting 635. So I'm headed for a little intercept on 635. So I'm gonna count that as a green light. I found 635, which is my first and maybe even most important waypoint. Here's 2,000 feet, level off. Now, as long as I stay on the north side of 635, I know I'm safe from the uh, Bravo airspace. Now that I got my first waypoint in sight and I'm flying over 635 off our right wing here, now I'm looking ahead to our next waypoint, which is going to be a beam Mesquite Airport. I see the lake that uh, Mesquite is just south of, which is good. So I'm gonna use those two reference points. I got 635 on my right wing. I've got the lake right in front of me, and so I'll be looking for Mesquite and go from there. Got a beautiful view of Dallas off our right wing, White Rock Lake here, which I live close to. A beautiful part of Dallas and, and North Texas. One of the great things about flying with pilotage instead of just locking into the GPS magenta line is that I think you get a little better appreciation for uh, flying and getting to see the world from this point of view. Instead of just focusing on the magenta line that costs about 400 bucks a year, you get to look out and use the land to navigate, which costs uh, zero dollars a year. Funny how that works. Okay, so I always thought this was so clunky to be folding up in the cockpit. You learn some strategies over time to uh, 
just be looking at the section of airspace that's relevant to you right then, but I don't miss unfolding this in the cockpit. Okay, so I know that I am a beam mesquite. Uh, mesquite is to our east, so I have arrived at our next checkpoint, which I think I get credit for, so passing grade so far. So now I'm going to make a slight right turn to heading 190, uh, where we're going to be looking for Highway 45, I think it is, that we'll follow to our next waypoint. So, uh, a beam mesquite, turning right 10 degrees, and we'll go to our next checkpoint. Luckily today we're moving faster than the cars are. You don't always get that luxury, but most times you do. Okay, so I think I've got Highway 45 straight in front of us, kind of slightly off our right wing. I've also got Lancaster, which is a helpful um, kind of cross-reference point to know that that is in fact the highway I'm looking for. So I know where I'm at. I think that next checkpoint is a passing grade. So far, so good. So now I'm gonna follow this highway until my next lake. Right now, life is good. While we're in route here, uh, one thing I do think about when I'm at 2,000 feet is bird strikes. Um, I put a lot of research together into a video that I'll link in the description, looking at the statistical danger of bird strikes and where they happen, when they happen, you know, where they're most likely to occur and that sort of thing. And uh, a very significant portion of bird strikes happen near the ground and when you're below about 3,000 feet. So uh, we're kind of in that hot spot right now um, you can hit a bird anywhere, but you're most likely or more likely close to the ground. So I do take even a, a better notice for uh, buzzards and things of that nature up here at 2,000 feet. So if you're interested, I really enjoyed putting that video together. I put a ton of effort into it, um, and I think you might enjoy it. So link will be down in the description. Learn more about bird strikes. Okay, so I do see my lake that I'm going for that's near Ennis. I'm going to uh, aim for the west side of that lake just to avoid some of the traffic pattern. Once I get to that lake, I'm going to climb up and then it's time to go find the next waypoint. So the lake that I was trying to find, I'm going to count that as a passing grade and on to the next one. I'm going to stay on the west side of this lake. I see Ennis Airport and I'm just going to be looking for traffic there, anyone departing. And we're going to give that airport just a little bit more room here. Okay, now that we know we're out of the class Bravo, we're gonna go ahead and climb up. It's gonna help us see that next lake a little bit better, and then uh, we're gonna need a little bit of altitude to get over the class Delta airspaces uh, around Waco. So we're gonna go ahead and climb up, find the next waypoint. Moving on up, moving on up to the east side, moving on up. Does anybody else sing in the cockpit? I sing in the cockpit a lot. Leave me a comment with what you sing. I like the Jeffersons. I think that's the Jeffersons. Okay, as we're climbing up, I think I see our next lake as we're headed south here, which is good. We'll get a little bit closer uh, before we turn right to go find I-35. We're not multitasking too much. The more task saturation you have, the more likely you are to miss something. So I'd like to climb up, get to altitude, clean it out, get in cruise uh, performance, and then kind of get back to navigation. For now, I've got the lake that I know I'm headed towards. So I'm gonna keep my tasks to just that for right now. Okay, so level one off here at 4,500 feet. So I've got this lake in front of me, which I think was a checkpoint. If not, I'll get extra credit for it. And what I'm gonna do now is instead of turning directly over I-35, which I actually see off my right here, it's a big old highway that runs all the way from Mexico to Canada. Uh, I think it goes all the way to Canada. But I know there's, I think it's Hillsboro. There's an airport there. They do a lot of skydiving. Uh, the weather's great today, so they're probably jumping. So I'm gonna split the difference here between the lake and the highway. Plus I know the highway kind of curves back uh, to the east a little bit, and I should be able to intercept it. So right now I've kind of got two waypoints that, I, that I'm familiar with that I've got on either side of me, which is really great for situational awareness. And someone is making a really cool airstrip here. Somebody's plowing it, flattening it. That is the dream right there. That's one of the awesome things about flying this low. I mean, we're at 4,500 feet, but you can still see everything in pretty good detail. I mean, just the houses you can spot that you would never know existed or the cool pieces of property that people have. It's so fun. 
Okay, so I've got I-35 off my right wing. I see it, I see it going down, I think to Waco. I've got uh, Lake Whitney up here in front of us and to the right, uh, which is a really big lake, easy to spot. And I see how I-35 curves down towards Waco. That's Lake Waco, I recognize the shape and you can kind of see the metropolitan area of Waco uh, on the east side of it. So I think I've got that in sight. So I'm gonna start a left turn here and uh, start to follow I-35 down to Waco and find our next waypoint. So our destination today is McGregor, which is uh, just outside of Waco. It's on the southwest side of it. Um, and so part of what we're having to plan here is not only navigation, uh, but also altitude. So we're gonna have to overfly the class Delta airspace of TSTC at both Waco uh, Regional. Uh, but there is a helpful waypoint here that I found on the sectional. Uh, to know when once we're outside and clear of that class delta airspace so we can descend into McGregor and that is the stadium for Baylor University of which I am an alum uh, proud Baylor Bear but uh, they built a brand new stadium right after I left used my tuition money to buy a stadium I could never use which is great and uh, anyways once we're over that stadium we know we're clear of the class delta airspace and we can descend so right now we're following I-35 going to be looking for McLean Stadium and then we will start down into our approach into McGregor. Okay, winds are 140 at 5, so we'll use runway 17 at McGregor. Got TSTC off my left wing. I've got Waco Regional and Lake Waco off to my right. And I do have McGregor in sight, which is great. I can see the cross runways there. Uh, we're kind of flying parallel. See runway 17 right now, which is great. I've got the stadium in front of me, so I will count that as a passing grade for finding the stadium. Give you a view here in just a second. Okay, we are over the stadium here. Show you what I was looking for. Beautiful McLean Stadium, sick of bears. We're over the stadium, so we know that we are clear of the Class D airspace for TSTC and for Waco. I see McGregor. So we can start an inbound turn and start down. There's so many fun things about flying. One of them is that there's such a spectrum of types of flying you can do. You can fly low and slow, you can fly high and fast. Today we're kind of doing a little bit of the low and slow method, uh, but a couple weeks ago I got to go fly in a TBM 930, which is the fastest single prop aircraft in the whole world. and flew it up to 30,000 feet, which was just a really, really fun experience and I got to video it. So we'll put a link at the end there and down in the description. Really encourage you to go watch that. Just something completely different from pilotage and dead reckoning, flying with the GPS uh, up in, up in uh, the pressurized altitudes uh, in the TBM. What a joy that was. Encourage you to go watch it uh, for something kind of contrasting this video. On these days with no wind and a long runway, you can spoil yourself coming in real fast and real high. So days like today are even more important to practice landing at the uh, airspeed you want and uh, you can get spoiled like I said flying to these long airstrips but then once you go to Idaho or Arkansas or somewhere and you don't have that luxury then uh, you know months of being spoiled on long runways will catch up with you so we're gonna try to do this by the book today so we got 60 knots coming in here Gas undercarriage mixture, prop, carb heat, cow flap, seat belts. And pretend we don't have four or five thousand feet here. Put it down on the numbers. Try anyways. Uh, it's probably about 30 feet long, but that'll work for civilian math. We made it to McGregor, pilotage and dead reckoning. There you have it, doesn't have to be hard. Um, and, it, and it can actually turn a cross country flight that might be boring for you in some instances if you're just using GPS and uh, can give you a fun new challenge. So I encourage you to do it. As I mentioned, go watch that TBM video for something totally different, flying to 30,000 feet and uh, make sure to subscribe. We'll see you guys in the next video.